and this whole um, going back to all these earth changes and changes that we're having right now, these social changes with the with this virus thing and like just I don't know all these shifts. I was I was listening to something recently and it was like oh during all this it's going to be like some pretty intense times for the next I don't know year a couple of years I don't really know how long but it's going to be longer than originally kind of expected that this is going to kind of project out all right whatever can happen I'm not saying yes or no but I did like this wait um, you mean like longer like the the transition or what yeah like this whole transitional f f thing and what like maybe I don't know maybe these lockdowns or like whatever I, I wasn't really sure but it seems like this whole transition is going to be longer than we originally expected or thought that could happen so but but then i had heard this it was a podcast or a, or a download i don't really remember where it came from now but it w just made me think like oh i like this um that during after this time or like during the end of this time pretty much like coming up soon actually in like April, May, people are going to be really aware of their, their people who are conscious and waking up to this, this, this new mm -hmm. world, um, will get in tune with their gifts and really know what their gifts are. And everyone will kind of be like on board working with their own gifts in a more like deliberate way and being able to just like kind of go into it. And it's just going to be like kind of snap happen. So I was thinking of that when you were talking about like, how you were sending energy to those people during, you know, during your trip, because you have, um, you know, you ha you're good with energy. And I thought, well, oh, maybe this is like the start it's of that so, whole gift opening. It's so up. weird. Cause like, I don't even think of myself as good with energy. And then it's just like, it's just like, oh yeah, something I could do. And then also it was like, like right. yesterday I was teaching Brian how to, like, he finally asked me, he was like, cause I tell everybody all the time. Like I've always been able to, like when I was little, I could control the rain or, right. you know, whatever. And so finally, like he j asked me, which was weird because no one has ever, ever asked me that. He's like, okay, so how do you do it? Like, how do you actually do it? How do you actually control the weather and the rain? And then it's like, and he's like, and when's the last time you did it? And I was like, oh, well, actually I moved the clouds so I could see the sun like all the time when I was on that Judema because it was a full moon or so not the sun, uh, the moon. Um, Cause it was a full moon, but it was overcast and I wanted to see it. So anytime I wanted to see it, I would just call it out and I would just move clouds around so I could see it and I don't even I didn't even think about it it just and he's like okay so what's your percentage of how often does that work and then like what's your thought process and how do you do it and I was like oh it's so weird like I never even thought to define that but yeah so if if I had to teach like what I was doing there's like a couple of techniques like I one thing is like I use my tongue on the roof of my mouth and I swirl it around and like that, like that kind of like connects me into, it's just like, it's just like when you, you're like talking to a dog in your head and you're like, no, don't come over here. Or, or I, you know, like there's, there's, um, there's unspoken language that you have with, with, uh, with, uh, with people, with, with animals, with other stuff like that. Well, just like rocks are a thing so is the particles in the sky so is the clouds and you can whatever feeling you you've that you unconsciously talk to whatever else in your life with you you can use that same feeling that same connection and just direct it towards actual clouds and then you just talk to them in your head and you could like i like they are very stubborn so you have to play tricks with them like you have to say things like, I bet you can't rain harder. Or I bet you, I bet you, I bet you can't stop raining. Or yeah, it's like playing with a little kid. Like there, you can't just be like, oh, no, stop, do this, do this. They don't, they won't listen to you if you do that. Like the clouds don't like that. They, um, you have to like, you have to like play with them. Hmm. <laughs> and then you have to ask them these questions in your head and stuff. And then you, you have to like, um, like, yeah, ch like just challenge them. Be like, okay, let's see if you could do a lightning strike right here, and draw out like what you want, and then you'll like wait to see if they're gonna do it or not. And you can feel whether or not they want to play. Oh, wow, that sounds like a very very specific gift, you know? Because I wouldn't imagine doing that. See, but like I feel like 
and have to explain it to everybody. Everybody could just try it and they probably will be just as good as I am at it. So how, yeah, so what was the percentage? Did you ever figure that out? Like when does that- I don't know, I was it? thinking like, it, it also depends on my mood. Like sometimes like I'll talk to the clouds and I already know I'm not in a very good headspace, so they don't want to have anything to do with me. They're just like, we're gonna do our own thing and you can just go away. But then every once in a while, like you you notice you that you got their attention and that they do want to play and that they are receptive. And then when when it's like that, then you you have like a ninety percent chance of being able to control what's going on. But when it when you're not really disconnected, it's like maybe a twenty thirty percent chance of them doing any kind of reactionary thing to what you want. Hmm. Okay, we'll try it. Whoever yeah. they are. The, by Where they, are they are. I just mean like the little tiny particles of water that make up the clouds. Yeah. Well, the, this is, yeah, it's something that you have that you can share and your, and your gift of energy. It's just like, like what you said, you didn't even know that you had it and you, yeah, you, and you do because a lot of us just don't even realize what our gifts are. We just assume that either everyone has it or don't look at it as a gift per se, but it actually is. So, mm -hmm. you know, like you just did it, you know, or you just like send energy to the people like when you did that with your, on the airplanes too, like you don't know what you're, you oh, know, yeah. you're sending energy. So yeah, those are gifts. Cool. Well, they'll yeah. be coming out more. So this, this past weekend, I went to, I went to Puerto Escondido to find, well, to register Sabina for school and to um, just like check out the area to figure out where we we're going to be living, all that kind of stuff. But I, but, but this weekend was also women's, um, women's oh, Day. Oh yeah, weekend. National Women's Day on the 8th, right? Or yeah, International Women's Day. It was like huge, huge in Mexico, huge demonstrations, huge, huge marches. And then on the ninth, which was the Monday, it was like a day, a, a day without women. And so women didn't go to work. Women um, stayed home. They were like, they were asked like pretty much like try not to buy anything. Like just don't go on social media. Like just like kind of disappear to see what kind of impact it would have just to make a point. Cause there's a lot of oh, stuff okay. going on in Mexico. I never heard about that. I guess I well, did. That was in, that it was in Mexico mostly this day without women because the eighth is International Women's Day and there's always demonstrations all over the world. But the ninth was a day without women. And that started because there are a lot of women, like 10 women a day disappear in Mexico and, or, or excuse me, are killed by usually, like you know. Like violent crimes. Yeah, just a violent crime, exactly. Fe feminicide, you know, um, killing of women. And so it's, it's just gotten so bad. Recently, there was a woman who was, um, who is splashed with acid and she was oh a violinist. God. Yeah. And this, this was over maybe the fall last year, or maybe last summer. Is this, and this, this gangs or like, no, th this was like a, a, like somebody that may, she may or may not have somebody that was obsessed with her, but he had political power. So everyone knows uh -huh. who did it. He sent somebody else to do it. And pretty much the guy's still walking free. And, and now like, n because now so many women were outraged and now like these acid things are like kind of happening, not more and more, but they have happened. It's not the only case in Mexico. So all these women start like, are obviously very mad. So there were huge demonstrations, huge, um, like, pe like kind of not always peaceful either. Like burning stuff, like knocking mm. down stuff. Well, not knocking down statues, but like painting statues. So a lot of that, like writing all, all the women who have ever disappeared um, or have been killed, I think killed, not disappeared, but anyway, uh, in Mexico, around like the center of the city. So, but, but anyway, so this day, I wasn't in Oaxaca City to participate in these events, but I went to Puerto Escondido, which I have a friend there. And so she, she invited me to a women's, she was having like brunch with some women friends and just doing like a women's circle. So I met this, these like very interesting women, very cool. One of them was totally into like a lot of the stuff that we talk about with the like the energies and stuff. Like I was just like, whoa. But, and my, my point here was like, she, she started talking about, she's like, you know, one, she was tell, saying that like one time when she was younger, I don't know how old, but she started like looking at her body and realizing that like, she's like, wouldn't it, isn't it, I think everything's just like a smaller, like a smaller universe of its own. Like pretty much what Magnificent, what is, yeah, yeah. Mundane's The Magnific Magnificent talks about. And she's like, and everything is its own like system. 
and and it has its own like consciousness. And so as she's telling me this, I'm looking at her like, did you read this book? You're like, I got like, a book for you. Yeah, I got a book for you. And she's like, no, I've never read that. She's like, I always thought it was my own craziness. And so she's like, but now as an adult, like she's starting to get like more into it. And in fact, her parents um, do like have this place and they do like um, vision quests with people. They like, they're guides actually. They're shamans. Yeah, what is it? Okay, what is a vision quest exactly? Because Wendy does, my friend Wendy does the vision quest. That Like from my understanding, it's like you, you're alone for three days in the wilderness. Is that correct? Well, that's what, that's what I think most of them are. And that's what they, she said that they, they were, they did not, well, but they, it sounded like she wasn't alone. They, I don't know what she did, but they, it was three days, almost like three and a half days without eating or drinking. Oh, and it's like a dry fast. It's like a dry fast. At least that one was, I think there's variations of them, but yes, three days you could be by yourself completely like, and you're not supposed to leave a certain area. But after, after you've been guided for a while it's not like somebody's just going to send you out into the wilderness you know like you've been working with a shaman for a while and then you get to the point of vision quest so you're being prepared and and cleansed and then you go out there and do that and so you're supposed to stay within a circle like you're actually you have to go out and find your own space draw this circle around yourself and then that's this place that you stay for three days until your shaman comes back to get you or your guide so anyway, mm -hmm. there's, I, there's variations, but she, when she was talking about that, I was thinking like, oh, she was talking about like all these things that she didn't realize about herself when she was younger. And she's like, now I'm realizing that they're gifts. And I was, and I just was thinking about that, like with you, because you were like, oh, I didn't realize this was a gift. And I like have my own things. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize these are gifts. And I, I think that we're at this point where we're changing over from the masculine, like hardcore systems that we have and we're switching into the feminine which everybody has male or female but like right we're starting to get into like the whole mysticism which is the feminine in that sense in that part well of it. you know it's like last night i was on the plane and i was sitting next to this guy who was an engineer for he's like a mechanical engineer for american and he was um tell, telling me about like you know I, I told him I saw my unicorn and like I was telling him about all this stuff like we just ended up having a good conversation and um somehow oh I told him like we have a YouTube channel and he was like what's it about and I was like oh you know like I don't even know like create like uh, I was like I don't even know what we're about we're like about <laughs> like, like random, random stuff like I was like I was like like magnetic poles and like consciousness and like aliens and like I, I don't know like energy books stuff. we've read yeah. yeah books we've read like where's and he's like he's like he's like yeah that I I think that we are little magnets he's like I think we like our heart is a magnet we work like magnets just like the and it's and he's like we're like a microcosm of the macrocosm of the planet which is a magnet I was like yes so true and then we like kept on talking about that and he was he was telling me about how when he was little, he used to, um, when he would dream, he would go out of his body and then he would feel himself being pulled back in right before he was going to be waking up. And he says he used to like try to claw at the halls or the doors or anything just to stay out. It's like stay in the astral world and not go back to the body because he could sense when he was about to wake up and it would just, and it's so interesting to me because these are things that have never been talked about until recently. Mm -hmm we're all talking about this, like, or at least I am with everybody, like all the time it feels like, and it's not even like I'm going like, hey, random dude on an airplane, tell me about your consciousness when you're sleeping when you were a child. No, it did not like that. It just, it, it, it came up and it happened. And then yeah. I'm starting to go like, people are starting to, like the, the awakening part for me is happening in that, like, like, people are starting to become aware of how their consciousness works or what's, or, or trying to examine their consciousness and like, Hey, you know what? We never really talked about this as a child, but this used to happen to me a lot. And that's maybe not usual or, and it's not even weird. It's just, we should examine what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, people are becoming more reflective in that way and, and, and questioning the status quo and just, you know, like even if it's, even if it's smaller steps and like not right. big consciousness stuff, like there's still like things that they didn't question before or that they just assumed that's the way it was. Like they're starting to have their doubts, which